The Birth of a Nation. So The Birth of a Nation is directed by Nate Parker, who's ultimately a first-time director. He's done a couple of shorts, I believe. But this is his first feature-length film. It also stars Nate Parker as Nat Turner. All right, so Birth of a Nation takes place in the 1800s. We're talking slavery America. Not exactly the golden age of American history or anything like that. So Nat Turner is versed in the Bible. He ministers to the slaves every Sunday. And the slaves are kind of getting restless, not only the fact because they're slaves and miserable, but there's a drought. And so some people have been like, hey, if you feed the slaves less, you can save on food and costs. So this whole propaganda scenario happens where they're like, hey, if Nat Turner ministers to the slaves in the verses of the Bible that just say, hey, mind your master, I think all will be okay. But he's seen enough shit in his life where he's like, you know what? Yeah, fuck that shit. Let's just revolt. But that part doesn't happen until much later in the movie. All right, first of all, what I liked about this movie is it's something I see a lot in first time directors. They have a lot of enthusiasm. So they just, they show you a lot of neat stuff. Passion behind the camera stuff, you know, a lot of tracking shots, a lot of panning shots. It looks beautiful in a very dark time and the movie totally engrosses you. That's what I look for in period pieces, you know, is whether or not I feel like I'm actually in the time. This movie does pull you right into the time. However, there were these moments of visual metaphor, you know, like he sees the girl he loves looking like an angel. There's an ear of corn that's bleeding. They're woven into the movie in a very jarring way and you're like, I don't know what, I get why they're trying to happen, but it doesn't work. So don't have them. And I respect the fact that he showed the unapologetic brutality of it. We saw that in 10 Years a Slave also, but 10 Years a Slave, what gripped me in that one is the fact that this guy was free and then one day he wakes up. It's like, oh yeah, you're a slave now. You've lost your life. Birth of a Nation, I felt, relied on the brutality of slavery for the sake of showing brutality of slavery to carry the movie for a lot of it. And that doesn't always gel well as a form of cohesive storytelling. So show it, but just don't rely on it to carry your film. All in all, the revolution of it, the thing that Nat Turner is known for happens in the last third of the movie, maybe fourth. And a lot of the movie leading up to that conflict, if it's not slow and boring, it's just brutal. And without something going, hey, this is what's coming, this is what's happening, this is why you're here, this is why you have to watch this, you kind of feel as lost as the movie probably is too. And when the conflict goes down, it picks up and you're like, oh, we're in a revolution now. Now the revolution doesn't last too long. And maybe that's why it's only a short part of the movie, but I mean, training day lasted one day. That took two hours. I feel like if the conflict is here and the buildup is here, you could have Shorten the build up, widen the conflict, showed more, and it would have made the movie a little more interesting. A thing I do like is the first guy Nat Turner kills, it actually, he threw up because of it. I mean, it literally, physically made him ill. And I remember seeing that and being like, how many times, how often do you see someone who's never killed anyone before kill somebody in a movie? And he's like, all right, now we're doing it. On to the next one. I love the fact this movie took a pause to show that the guy actually physically got ill because he's just not a killer. However, it also just put it in my mind that this movie is going to go places and it's gonna be a new experience. Let's experience it. However, by the end of this movie, I don't feel it lived up to that perception. And it's really frustrating because this movie has a lot of potential based on its premise. All right, there are a lot of Bible verses that these slavers used to subdue the slaves and be like, you see, this is scripture. You saw that in 12 Years a Slave. Fassbender totally used that. They use it in here too. However, for every verse like that there's another verse going no 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 don't treat people like that you're a dick if you do paraphrasing and that's mentioned in this movie this movie tells you that is the motivation for him nat turner doing this whole revolt however it's not hit home because you don't feel it at no point do you see this conflict going down and you think to yourself these two are fighting over like beliefs in the same book. That's a fascinating thing to me. And the movie never really hit that point home. And that just bums me out. And the movie is very, it's black and white. It's, there's no middle ground to it. I just, I don't mean, you know what I mean. Example, Army Hammer's in the movie and he actually does a good job in here. And you kind of get the feeling that he and Nat Turner are as civil, as nice as it could have been until it just one day falls apart and then that's that. I mean, there's this one scene where this dude has a dog and it just gets on Nat Turner. It's like, get out of my property. And Army Hammer comes barreling around the corner. It's like, he's with me. He looked visibly angry to a point where you're like, oh, he's like protective of him. And at a point in the movie, there is such a turn between these two where you're like, did it, was that building up? Did it, I didn't feel the buildup. And that really fell apart like today, like now. And I'm not saying the movie was illustrating that they were friends. I'm saying the movie was executed in a way that kind of gave you that feeling. And if that wasn't supposed to be, then that is a flaw in the movie. And at a point in Nat Turner's revolt, you know that some of these houses have children in them and you don't know what like, 
Are they, did the kids die? I mean, the adults got wiped out, so I I don't know. The movie leaves me with that question in my head. So I'm left to be like, okay, are you guys leading a revolt and you've had it and you're, gonna, you're just gonna kill the people who have been brutalizing you all this time? Or are you sociopaths who are also killing children? I don't know. Because in the end, The Birth of a Nation is interesting, historically speaking, but really doesn't stand out as much more than well, another movie that takes place in the slave era. In the end, you're just watching historical stuff happen and then the revolution and then it ends and then you walk out going, yep, Totally gonna be shown in high schools. This movie should have been more interesting than it was. It wasn't and would probably be a better time if you're drunk. Yeah, no, I can't really say it's a party. It'd be in bad taste, wouldn't it? All right, guys, so The Birth of a Nation. Have you seen it? What did you think about it? Or what's the hardest historical movie for you to watch? You know, the movie you watch, you're like, yeah, I watched it. It's rough, so I'm not gonna watch it again. Whatever it is, whatever you think, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, click right here to see more.